The Missouri Botanical Garden opened its doors to the public in 1859. It was the vision and dream of Henry Shaw to get back to the city which had provided him with his fortune. Over a century and a half later, the garden continues to thrive and to contribute. Hello, my name is Stephen Lachance. I'm a paranormal author and a paranormal researcher. I'm also the founder of Monster Paranormal, which works right here in the city of St. Louis. Why the paranormal, you might say? Because there's a whole bunch of strange and exciting and unexplained things out there that need to be looked at and see if we can find some answers. Let's take a look at the Missouri Botanical Garden, for example. For years, stories have been circulated and whispered about that the garden just might possibly be haunted. Recently, the Monster Crew was given an unprecedented access to research and to investigate the garden. What has struck me so significantly about this research is how integrated these stories have become within the culture of the garden. There appears to be a desire and a, and a need to validate these stories for not only those who are working there, but for those who love and enjoy the Missouri Botanical Garden. So for our purpose here, it all boils down to one question, and one question only. Is it haunted? Let's see if we can find out the answer. My career here at the garden started actually way before I became an employee. I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to live on the garden grounds. When I was a child, my father actually works in horticulture. So there used to be a house before the current Ridgeway Visitor Center was built on the corner of Shaw and Alfred in what's now the parking lot. When I was about four years old, I was in the upper bedroom of where I slept. And in the middle of the night, I heard a woman's voice softly call my name to get me to come downstairs. I thought it was my mother. I put on my rain boots, got out of bed, and slowly went down the stairs. Only when my foot hit the top step, I floated down to the front door and woke up screaming. And my mother and father came downstairs to find me getting ready to open the door and leave the house. You never told us what the little girl's name was. Okay. First year, my office was were based out of the gatehouse, and the first week in, we would hear the doorbell ring, and every single time we'd get up and we'd go answer the door, and there'd be nobody there. This went on for a while, and eventually we just started figuring it was you know maybe one of the guests or something just coming up and seeing if somebody was home. About three or four days of this goes on, and we start wondering why do so many guests keep doing it. So we try to track down which door the doorbell's ringing at, and it's not until then that we figure out there, there is no doorbell in the entire gatehouse. Last October, there were a couple of ghost tours through the garden, and a volunteer and I worked in the house, and we welcomed the participants in. I shared some of my stories with them, and he shared his. And during the course of the uh, conversation, one of our participants said that they had heard a clock chime. And she says, oh, she said, uh, did someone just wind the clock? And Jennifer looked at me and I said, well, no, I, you know, I'm a volunteer. I don't do things like that. And we have no working clocks in the house. And I thought she was pulling my leg and they had to get moving to go to the next stop. And after they left and we closed the door, I quickly went over to check the clock on the bookcase in the east wing. And it in fact was ticking. And as I picked it up, it chimed and the clock 
has not been wound. We don't have a key, and a couple of days after, it's sporadically advanced time. I hear a clock. Wait, clock ticking. That's a ticking. I was alone at the maintenance shop, which is in the southwest part of the garden, when suddenly something slammed against the door. And at the same instance, all these tools came falling off of the pegboard over our saw table, leaving large holes in the pegboard. It was rather strange. Last winter, I was working the Garden Glow, and I had a couple incidents happen to me here in the, uh, the basement of the old administration building, which was Mr. Shaw's residence downtown that was moved to here in the garden. First instance, I had a shadow figure walk out and cross in front of me and vanished over here into his vault. And the second one, it happened two or three weeks later, I was coming in the outer door to uh, this section of the building, and I had another shadow figure hovering over my right shoulder as I opened the door. And from that point on, I was, became a little spooked. And so every night that I came in, I would say, good, good morning or good evening, uh, Mr. Shaw. And at night when I was shutting everything down, I would say, tell him, wish him a good night. We had a train in a Christmas scene that we had set up and I had to be very on top of the batteries because batteries accumulatively get very expensive. And so I would always make sure that I turned the batteries off at night so that, that way they would last me about three days. Now I didn't want to ruin the Christmas scene by crawling underneath the tree and possibly moving the scene or the tree or something and some another thing I'd have to fix. So I'd always wait for the train to come to me and where I'd pick it up and turn it off and then set it back down on its track. And about three, four nights out of the month, I'd come into work the next day and the train would be moved and it would be in the on position and all the batteries would be dead. So something would turn the train on and it would run through the night or it would be off track, uh, which was strange too, because it was a pretty sturdy track. And once it was in place, it was really nothing to move the track to get it to where it would be in a position to put itself off track. You won. Play. You won. Play. You won. Play. In some of our buildings, we have candles in the windows, and we'd notice some different lights being out at different times, and we'd go in and change the, either the bulb or the batteries in the candles. And the southwest window of the library slash museum building, the candles that were set up on a little pedestal would get knocked across the floor by the shutter. It happened at least three times during the run of the glow. Several times in Tower Grove House when we decorate for the holidays, while we've been upstairs, we've heard a man's footsteps with hard-soled shoes walk from the back of the house to the front of the house. And when we peer over the railing to ask who's there, no one answers. Are you safe? Because you can feel safe with us. Did somebody make a noise outside? Absolutely nothing. It sounded like we was chasing something around. 
Yeah, because we were up in his room. One of the doors on one of the cabinets sounded like it shut. Bookcase made noise. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, one night, checking the house, I was coming down the main staircase here, and I was about halfway, and I just kind of felt something pass me on the stairs. That's the only way I can describe it. It just seemed like something went by me. And by the time I took the next step on the stairway, I could see the exit sign here with the emergency lights on it, and both the spotlights were on. It's the only time I've ever seen the lights on in the house, and they aren't really supposed to come on unless the power is out. So I finished checking the house, and I went back to the front of the garden because I knew Jen, who runs the house, was still at work. Went up to her office, sat down, told her the story, and she just kind of sat there and said, Drew, look at your arms. And I just had goosebumps on my arms 10, 15 minutes later after being in the house. Does anybody speak French? Hello. Hello. Well, thank you. Can you give whoever's speaking French to us, can you give us your name, please? You can say it in French. Working on a Saturday afternoon one day in the administration building. I was on the third floor near the elevator and I kept hearing the elevator come to the third floor and open. And I'd go and look and no one was there. Well, this happened three or four times while I was there and I knew there wasn't anyone else in the building. This volunteer and I went to the museum building to welcome the visitors in and share a little bit of information about that building with them. And when I went in first, I went to turn on the lights and as I turned around and looked upstairs facing south, a black shadow figure walked into the south room upstairs. A volunteer was showing up for duty to open up the house and as she walked through the mausoleum grounds she saw a woman standing up at the front of Tower Grove House peering through the wrought iron gates as if she were talking to someone. She passed by and went around the side of the house to go into the basement which was part of her normal routine. She came in from the basement up to the main floor and said hello is anybody here and no one answered. Shortly thereafter, she's kind of going through the house and there's nobody in the house. So she's trying to figure out, well, who was on the front porch talking to this woman? And a few minutes later, the basement door opened and a staff member walked in and said, hey, I'm here for the day. And she had asked, you know, were you outside a little while ago talking to a woman? And she said, no, I just got here. So we have no idea who the woman was. There was no one in the house to talk to this woman, but there was clearly some interaction and conversation happening. So we sort of surmised that perhaps it was Mrs. Edom talking to Henry through the gates because there's a historic picture of Mrs. Edom in her memorial gown standing in front of the mausoleum. Anybody walking with me? After collecting way over 200 pieces of paranormal evidence, you think we might be able to answer our question by now. But maybe the answer to our question does not lie in the present. Maybe we need to go back into history to see if we can answer the question, is it haunted? Or maybe that question was already answered. Is it haunted?
Well, the answer is yes, it is. Thank you.